Um, is that a hanging spotlight? You could go to the questioner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Stop in the back here. So forgive me, but um, I wanted to ask you, uh, just watching some of the old 1970s films that you showed us here today, what is so when you when you start making them, what was your uh, motive? Like, the kind of the go-to objective of the film? Um, I was very naive. I thought that, I, I mean, I should have done a little research, but um, I thought that you could make short films and someone would just pay you to keep making them and that <laughs> there was a business there. Um, but that had already ended. Uh, they used to, show short animated films with every live action feature for like 30 years. Um, so I seriously didn't, didn't realize that uh, my goal, the first films, was how to learn animation, become the best I could. But when I finished the student films, I needed a job and I was able to get one at Disney. Disney, even though my work is not so much like Disney, they saw something there. And um, it's, I, I will tell you this, networking, the people you know in school, the people you meet in your first jobs, that's how you get work. I mean, I met Tim Burton, I met Brad Bird, who's the, <laughs> the director of The Incredibles, um, John Musker, the director of Little Mermaid, and all these other films. I was with them, and I learned so much from being around them. And by going to Disney, since, since I hadn't had the goal of working at Disney, I was competing against all these people who that was their, their dream for their whole life. It was very difficult for me to do that style, but it was so good for me to, to learn. So having done the shorts, I needed a job, I worked at Disney, and then I started to blend my sort of experimental imagery and, and ways to tell stories with everything I learned from Disney and ultimately that got me to the position of, of being able to do a film Nightmare Before Christmas for Tim, or ultimately, you know, James from the Giant Peach, or Coraline, which I wrote and directed. So it was no long plan. I just loved animation. I was going to find a way to make it no matter what. And I got lucky and met some good people. Thank you very much. <laughs> effort to, to revisit things in Coraline, um, but obviously there's a connection and there's some power there. Uh, you know, the spider web, you know, spiders, I have mixed feelings. They can be horrible, scary creatures, and other times they're just wonderful, amazing, um, and they're, they're webs and construction. So, so in the, the slow bob, the last MTV, the spider is a friend who sends messages, um, like the famous story, Charlotte's Web. But in Coraline, it's the, you know, the most frightening, sort of a spider lady creature in a web to catch children. Um, oh gosh, the MTV experience, it's, it's really a one of a kind. 
and I have to be honest, I was, I was doing my short films, and again, it was a connection. I went to school with this, this guy, Paul Doherty, and his brother got a job at MTV, and he knew that I could make him look good, because people hadn't seen my work yet, and he was in charge of doing these interstitials. So it was, it was really a great gig. What I would do, I would draw my own storyboards and send them in, and you know, nine times out of 10, they say, okay, and um, just enough money to make it, but the freedom was, was great, and everybody got to see those. They, they didn't know that I was making them with my team, but ultimately, I think it was one of the things that really helped convince Tim that, that well, Henry's continued with stop motion, look at this huge range of things he's done. Um, but it was, it was great. I mean, I've never had a situation like that again, just, you know, show us your idea, okay, good, here's a little money, go make it. And then they show it eight million times. <laughs> Thank you. Grace here has been amazing for a while. questions and you have to answer them all at once and the, and the whole team is focused on one shot at a time you could have a hundred people working on it and you're just doing one shot in animation it's much slower um, there's a little more time to make your decisions but the best thing I like about it is divided up into many many small teams that you know the only way you can get a, a feature film done is to have many images uh, happening at the same time. So it, it's, it's the stop motion I do, it's like live action in that there are real sets, uh, real lights, the actors do voices, but the real actors are animators who move puppets. And I like that intimacy of working with small teams, moving from one to the next to the next, um, to keep all the plates spinning. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, thank you. foundation. Um, but the funny thing is, on the previous films, both Change the Dream Page and Nightmare Before Christmas, a director ends up doing rewrites. You are in a situation, you have to make a scene work. 
So you're, you're tasked with it. So I've always been a writer. Um, this is the first time I got paid to be a writer. And um, as far as, you know, the different styles of animation, what I liked and what I didn't like, it was all a journey. I, I, mean, I still love hand-drawn animation. And certainly some computer animation is fantastic. It can do anything. I'm a little disappointed that so much of it looks exactly the same. Um, uh, but, you know, there are those exceptions. Uh, especially sometimes if the budget is a little lower, like uh, Jorge Gutierrez, uh, The Book of Life. I don't know, The Libre de Vida, I'm not sure. Um, he's, he's a genius, a master. Uh, I thought the design, the authenticity of uh, the imagery was just great. And that, for a CG film, I thought it was just, just perfect. So, you know, for me, it's just a path to find what, what I was good at, what I was interested in. And ultimately, I was always hiring. I could do every job, but I would hire people who were better than me at doing the camera, at doing the lights, and ultimately, better animators, because you want your, your projects to be as good as they can. I hope I've answered some of your questions. It's a great question, actually. Um, we wing on it. Uh, <laughs> I can't give any individual an answer on this. I only know for myself. Um, most of the jobs in animation, you know, people have to make a living. They, 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 uh, unless they work at a university uh, or get government grants. Um, most people have to copy a style. They have to make it look, oh, we can look like Pixar, but only for this much money. Um, the thing for me about what, what technology has done, it's allowed people to do high quality work for lower costs, but I'm a little disappointed people aren't taking more chances. Um, and here's, here's the good news. Uh, 
if you have a personal style you have something to say something funny something dark whatever it might be and the means to do a very short film even one minute you can put it out on YouTube you can find out if there's an audience and if you get a hundred thousand hits a million hits suddenly there'll be someone who'll say hey your success on YouTube will pay you to keep you know doing what you want to do so that technology where anyone can share anything um, and there's a chance people will fall in love with your work I love that because then the gatekeepers the people who say no it's not exactly like Pixar no it's not exactly like Disney not interested that doesn't matter this is a time where individual styles get a chance and you know that's that's what's good with the technology I think it can capture people it can hold them captive because people get used to okay well that's how the successful films look so we're forced to just copy that I don't think you are especially if you have that chance to put out something short and see if you can grow an audience it might take a while but I've seen some uh, remarkable young artists animators get their shot but just doing things on their own time and putting them out and getting discovered. So that's the best part of the technology. No. I'm going to be here the whole week. If there's... I'll be here until you're sick of me and you have no more questions. Oh. But not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> And then I once made this sculpture and I didn't like the pose, so I put joints. It was a full size human. I put joints in its arms and legs so I could change the pose when I felt like it. Um, finally, I saw some actually experimental animation and I realized everything I love, I was also a musician and, and that was sort of my second choice. Everything I love comes together in animation. Uh, so that's what, you know. All my hobbies came together. It took a long time to get used to how slow it is to make an animated film, but I got, I got used to it. Um, I think the thing that changed, or what led me to the, the, the stop motion was simply, I really like touching things, moving, and stop motion is very, it's very physical. Um, you know, there's animation, computer, uh, and most drawn, you know, I, I worked at Disney for three and a half years and I got sort of tired of sitting at the seat all day long and occasionally having meetings and of course wonderful people and lessons learned, but I wanted to move more. 
So the combination of the, the tactile uh, feeling of stop motion actually wrestling with puppets to bring them to life, to shift them around and take the pictures, uh, that touch and the sense of using your whole body and being around those sets and that culture of stop motion. That's just my favorite world. It's not better than other animation. Not, I, love, I love the other types, but for me, it's just the world I, I found uh, I was happiest in. And as far as the things I've worked on, um, I like the best. I, it's really three things. It's, it's the MTVs, because I actually got paid to be creative, which was, you know, a first. Uh, and then Nightmare Before Christmas, which was kind of the first big stop motion feature in, in the United States. And everyone that worked on that with me was from a team I had built. We were all just so happy. Like, we couldn't believe we were getting to make this. You know, Tim's story, his character designs were brilliant. <laughs> and ultimately, Coraline. Coraline's probably the peak of what I feel I've done. It's, it's um, you know, I wrote the, the script. I had a hand in design. And uh, it, was, it was a powerful book it was based on. I felt that I honored. I honored the book and created another world. And, and one of the main things I like about Coraline is um, she is an ordinary girl. She doesn't have superpowers. She's not a super genius. Mm. She's brave and stubborn. And in the end, it allows an ordinary girl to face horrible, terrible evil and, and succeed. Um, so, you know, th those those are the, the main things that, that you know, I, I've, I've enjoyed things. In. I did a bunch of commercials, too, that were fun, but those are the ones that stand out in my life. And I hope, I hope to make one more really great film. Uh, it's not official, but it would be a stop motion um, project. I'll talk more about it later in the week. Anyway, thanks for your question. Uh, thank you so much, Henry. This was a hell of a way to open uh, the week in the festival. As, as he said, the, the, the festival is long. The week is long, and you're going to have a lot of chances to, to meet Henry, um, to hear about his amazing work, and all of the incredible guests that we have at Cornelia this year. So thank you very much for coming this night. Thank you very much for being part of Pixel Adel.